Hemshech Chaim Beis, Volume 1. We finished Chapter 87. We're ready to go to Chapter 88. Let me do a summary of 87. Okay, so in the concept of number, which is Sphira, Vlash and Misper, we've established that there's two aspects to it. Misper Eris, Misper Akelim. That's the language of Chassidus. In simple English, as he explained, they're not the same number. One is measures the number of quality, one is the number of quantity, which is why when it comes to quality, the higher you go, the the more power there is. And the, as it gets diminished, as the air gets diminished, it's weaker lower on lower levels. When it comes to kalim, you talk about how many letters are being used, let's say, when you're speaking dibur. So the higher you go, the less ischalkos there is, the less distinction, and everything is more 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 in a general a general a general context, less number, in other words, and quantity emerges as it descends, less energy, more containers, more containers, less energy. And to, and to explain. And to explain these two things, he, in chapter 87, he says, now. Uh, let me just, before we go to that, and the, pro- the point of explaining these two things is because it's all part of the interface. Remember, we're trying to understand what spheres are. Because spheres become, the, the spheres is the operative word that God uses, essentially, his tools, his instruments, uh, as the interface between godliness and existence. Like he said, a very powerful few words that everything comes through spheres. Lefishuhi begins every gili, the whole gili hayadei spheres. The bottom of page kufnuches. And he began, of course, the whole discussion is whether there are spheres in in keser, in igulim, in transcendence. And he made the distinction that there are spheres on all the levels. It depends, however, what aspect of sphere is reflecting. So clearly, all the three interpretations that he's going to be explaining in sphere. Number, uh, relating, Sipur, and uh, Evan Sapir are going to be three dimensions. But even in, Sip, in Mispur itself, we're talking many levels here. And generally, Eris and Kalim, energies and containers. In containers itself, we spoke of Primis Akalim and Sakalim. So the whole idea is critical is because we're trying to play a meet place where quality and quantity meet. We live in a world of quantity. And we're trying to appreciate and understand quality. And so misper, misper the air, misper the keli, where the keli and air meet in Atzillus, is the place where all this takes emerges. So basically it's how misper evolves. How does number, where does the number come from? So it comes originally, it comes from God's desire and ability to also have kreich Like the artist, one way. But how does it emerge in existence? In other words, how do we actually have entities? Why is this world a world of multiplicity? It all comes from Hashem Echad. It should be one world. It should be one entity. Or even if it's distinct, it should look like one thing with parts to it. And clearly we live in a world where it's fragmented to the point it could even be divisive. Where we don't feel we're part of one whole. People can get a war with each other. Parts. So how does this? where did this come from? So the the power of gvul itself, that the idea that there should be a structure of levels, that's rooted in the Eden Sof, that Eden Sof, that God desired gvul, as the spheres, Hagnus is ten hidden spheres, but higher than that, a sphere of St. Ketz, without an end, fine. But then how does it become a tangible reality? Just like all of existence, how does it become a tangible reality? It's all the power of God. So God wanted to make it in a way that, make, that there's a logical progression. It doesn't just pop out. Suddenly a world of the multiplicity. So it begins, first of everything was like an anamorphous, like in a seed. The seed begins to develop. The kav continues to flow. A lot of energy, almost no containers. Then the containers emerge. Then the energy and containers are clashed with each other. And the tension and the shvira sakelim. The containers emerge because the energy gets diminished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. energy gets diminished, the containers. It's like the machshav, the, the high the seichel, and the containers, the letters begin to emerge. And then Atzillus is where the Eris and Kalim come together. So suddenly number, the number that was hidden before begins to emerge. And here's the difference. In Eir, what emerges primarily is the quality of it. In other words, the divine power of this number. The chivas of it, the value, the magnitude in quality. 
And the kalim primarily focus on the structure, the distinction. Now, diminish it even further, and you get into Briya, and even further Yitzira and Asiya, and all the way to our world, we have a real, tangible, concrete a multi- world of multiplicity and duality, where one thing does not even know that it's related to another thing. That's already complete concealment. In Atzilas, the concealment is only, as he said, to reveal the gvul. So the kalim reveal the distinction, the ischalkus, he keeps saying. And the ayir reveals the qualitative element of it, the divine part of it, so to speak. And primis kalim is the place where kalim and ayir meet. So primis is like in the number itself, it's like, like a subtle place, because primis akeli is a description and a, and a reflection like the colors of the light. So it's giving the light some type of expression. But the focus there is also primarily air. It's subtle levels. But he spoke in Aved, he spoke the difference between Bitla Yash, Bitla Mitzis, that when you're dealing with um, the work of your Nefesh Alekis, that's primarily in the Misper Eris. You're talking the quality. And, and you talk about the Misper, one second, the Aved of, of the Nefesh Abamis, which is the Yash, the structure of existence. You're talking about the elevating and the sublimating of the Misper HaKelim, of the number of the containers. Maybe I don't understand the whole thing, but we, we always talk about the Kelim containers as being the... Uh I never heard the first thing that you just said. It's always been the other way around. We, 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 you, whatever, what I said now is consistent with everything all from the beginning of this Hemshah that we've been learning. What do you see the difference between Eir and Kelim? Or comes down, it, 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 and, and, and generally, the club, is, let's say the Kelim was like a glove, so it, it forms itself a hand to fit into the Kelim. So the, the quality of the Kelim seems to determine. He has operating instructions, but he wants to go up, but, he, but he's told to go into the Kelim. And we learned this before, uh, and, 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 and then... It, it, so what do the Kelim accomplish Kalim in, the, in that language? Shape what the whole... So shape, shape is number. Shape is number. Shape and number. Shape is not, it's not a quality. Shape, when you talk with what aspect, shape, generally speaking, as he said, number is distinction. Shape means distinction. As soon as distinction, that's more the tangible part of the number. If you talk about the quality of the number, what do I mean by the quality? Like the shechina resting, or that is the divine, uh, the divine power to create this, 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 this uh, chachma okay, bina. Nothing like, it's a lot, so things like shape and, and redness, for example. That's Kalim speak language. Yeah, so that's, so quality, in, that's quantity language. If you want to use, yeah, you could say it's quantity. I, you know, yeah. Wow. It's expression language. Okay. Yeah, that's quantity language. Wow. When they're really separate is where you have, like I said, in this world, you, could, you can worship something of quantity. It has no quality at all. People value things today that are absolutely meaningless. And you can have right near you a treasure and not value it at all. Because people worship quantity, worship a Look, quantity literally means number, but quantity also means external. It's an external expression of something. Remember we spoke about how a person counts himself and then he gives you the number. You know, we don't even value numbers today. Someone says to you, a million, you don't even know what a million is. Well, you're a million, million dollars, you know. Okay. So I have that number, numbers in my bank account. We only deal with, when we use the word quality, we, mean, we really mean high quality. And, and, then when and when it's low quality, yeah, low quality is already gone. Yeah, yeah, I mean, low quality, you mean like in this world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember, not silas, there's no low quality. I mean, yes, there is not, I wouldn't say there's levels of quality too. Of course, quality also goes through its, uh, um, yeah, okay. So in this chapter 87, he brought down now this whole thing of Misbara Eir, Misbara Kaili to explain, to, uh, um, to, uh, to relate it to. But he began by saying what it says in the Gemara in Beya, on Beitzo, Beya, the people, different people, as they say, two different ways, Esha Dakilimnis and Kolsha Dakilimnis, which refers to two different types of um, numbers. One, as we discussed, is a number, something that is only distinguished or only, uh, the only way you, uh, a transaction is held is by counting the actual numbers, that is something of more value. So it's, 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 it has that value. Or things that are sold or, uh, or exchanged, traded through um, in the groups where you don't necessarily count each individual. 
As I said I wanted to have some examples. I'm going to look it up in Gemara because it would be interesting to see which is which because one is more quantity, one is more quality. Um, and he brings the Shalah that, <clears throat> that counting reflects on something that because the Shekhinah rests there. That's where the Jews were counted. And the explanation he gives is that Misper shows on Chshivas. Why do you count something? Because it has value. That's why you count it. So things that are more valuable, you count each individual one. Things that are less valuable, you don't count. And without going through every detail, but basically went through, we brought a lot of my Moruch Chazal, including the one where we say, Shorach Agan Asar. Right? No, no, yeah, yeah, but Maim Chazal, the Medish and the Pasuk, that is referring to Bitnacha uh, Arimas Chitim. So this is all talking about how it's an example how you count both when you plant it and both when you uh, when you uh, gather it. So the same thing is Jews were counted when they went into Mitzrayim and when they came out because it's about the value of something. And then he began to explain the difference in two types of levels, Tzva Shamayim and Tzva Ha'aretz, meaning the celestial bodies and the way it is down below. Bringing the Pasuk about that because of uh, God's power, the Tzva Shamayim HaKayomim Be'ish, meaning each individual body, celestial bodies, are all um, permanent. Not because on their own, because they don't have power of their own, because the Kayach ain't safe. And this was discussed, the difference with it. Below on earth, everything lasts, only the species is forever. But there it's also every individual creature, individual body. And the explanation here basically was that uh, both of them have, obviously, the power of the divine. But one, you see it in a more revealed way. Literally, you look at something, you look at the sun, you look at another celestial body, you see Chazakim Kiyimi Baram, they're as powerful today as when the day they were created. And with this he explained that Pasuk that he brought, with the Pasuk which was the Pasuk was um, the whole explanation, Su Marim Enechem. And Maitzi, explaining how Maitzi B'Mispa Tzvam. Su Marim Enechem says, Yeah. Su Marim Enechem, Rumi Bara which then follows you say, I'm Mesh with Vam, and then Merev Einim Vamit Kayach Ishle Nadar. So all this is one flow. You look up and you see, and that gives you ability to appreciate the value, the divine investment that gives it power to be Merev Einim Vamit. As he explained, Merev Einim Vamit goes on the Svaha Shamayim. He brings from the Tikkun Ezer. <coughs> That's Kesser. And Ruam it's Kayak, that's Chachmas. He says, Reven, well, that's a kosher. So, Reven, well, that's a kosher. So, there's Bishamayim. Alekinu Bishamayim. So, you can have the Havamin, you can consider and say, you know what? Only in heaven do you really see this infinite power. But when it comes to law, yeah, Alekinu. And more subtly, that means that when you're doing Ruchin's work, that's where you see godliness. But in Maisa Mitzvahs, and physical Mitzvahs, not. So the answer is no. Because the second half of the Pasuk is Kol um, Hashem Osa, that even on earth, even on below, you also have the Kayach HaEinsef. However, at the end of the day, in Shemaim you see it more. She explains the differences between the Hashgochet from Havaya and the from Elikim. She really have basically two dimensions. Everything is controlled by God, obviously. But there are places where you see it more, more distinct. And that's in Shemaim. You see it in the Tzvah Shemaim. Shemais bin Mitzvah Tzvah. And explain the difference between Hashgochet of Shem Havaya and Shem Elikim using, of course, from Mitzrayim. When it says Rashi, when the pasuk says Ve'yedelikim, it says Ve'yishmelikim, Ve'yedelikim. Rashi says that Nos Naleim Lev Alehi Lemenov. So he explains that there's two states. There's a state where it's concealed, that's in Golos, 
So even there, there's Osha Hashgacha, but you don't see it. It's concealed in many layers to the point that you can consider, convince yourself that your efforts are what accomplish something. And you need that Veda to work, but Rech Hashem that it's God's blessing, not your own. And then there's times when it's revealed. He said in the revelation itself, there's two levels. There's an Havai that could be with some Lavush that's a very subtle garment, but there's a garment. Then there's completely revealed, as it was by Gulas Mitzrayim. And he explained, but if Yeh Delekim, there, there too, it's the Hashgach of Havaya, meaning the higher awareness of God also permeated the lower level, and that's why it affected not just um, not just the Eden, but Nagav also the Mitzrayim, that it also affected Mitzrayim. And he explained the reason you need to have the Levushim is because it has to become rele- relevant, it's also part of the interface, relevant and connected to us. If you only had God's blessing and you didn't have a chol it wouldn't be, it wouldn't come down into the containers that are commensurate to the human being. Anyway, all this long explanation to sum up, ah? Huh? I heard two people talk about shul today. Does it have to be commensurate? In other words, if they have a plan from the nice shul, they have a plan to give a person a million dollars this year, but he has a he has a shoe store. So begash may say he has a shoe store, he can't make a million dollars. So how is it? I mean. In other words, it's commensurate or it could be another way that the... It's, it's, it's great uncle passes away. Well, the, only in Kosh Hatas, it has to be only in the case that the person makes. First of all, there's different explanations in different places how that works. If you let, Let's go to the extreme. If you do nothing and just sleep at home all day, uh, even if God wants to bless you, you're not there to receive it. There's no Kali altogether, you know? Then there's make a keli means for different people different things different ishtadlus. I don't know if um, you can really measure it in a technical way. We have to do what we have to do our part. If you have a mashpia and you speak to an objective person asking, are you doing what, whatever you can do possible? So you made your keli, and then then what happens happens. But you know, it seems like the guys that really work hard and try and save their money ultimately become on on certain levels absolutely of course but you know something you'll find two people do the same effort and one is majorly and the other one is not sometimes even one that does more the other is less matzliach there are there's mazel things I mean I'm not in business but I hear from people that actually do you know you come into the appointment you came 10 minutes earlier it could have been the difference between millions of dollars someone else came first that's completely not in your control. So you have your best presentation, but you know what? The guy says, I just signed a contract with someone. So That's what it says clear. I'll go even a step further. There are people... To, uh, also, you have to distinguish between a moment. This moment, you made more stylish, you may make more. But over the years, you know, good businessman continues many different opportunities, right? You don't try once only. So you try many, many times. So that's the part of the kalim, the different attempts. Now, the truth is, yeah, if you make a small kalim, like there's a shoe store, and that's what you're misdopic, uh, evidently, even if God wants more, you, your kalim, you, you've determined that your kalim is, is, you know, you're, even Abidara Chateva was the best you can do. So you may get the best you can do. Some people make kalim that are a little bigger than that. People take bigger risks, you know, and do, and do bigger investments, or whatever it may be. Look, the bottom line is... Uh, it's, uh, there's no magic trick. You eliminate the bracha, that's the thing, the question. You eliminate the bracha. You, 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 I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah. For sure, that could be the case, of course. If you try the Baal Shemter's trick, just knock on the window and leave, you definitely get, and the chances are lower. You know. Now, God insists and wants to bless somebody no matter what. Obviously, that can happen. We're not talking about in Sim Chalon Ness. Right, exactly. Exactly. But, uh, but, but, but it is true that... Uh, that a person applies themselves. The bottom line is, even if you have the greatest success, never convince yourself it's completely you. That's the bottom line. That's the, the point here. You need your ishtadlis to make it part of this reality. This is true business and, and everything, really. Okay. Islam is on He used to always hate when people say they're self-made men. He used to hate that expression. It's a classic Ayn Rand philosophy, is the self-made man. Which is like no God. He becomes self worship This is the Deir Afloga. The last Islam Shem. They wanted to make themselves a name. Yeah. I mean, this is the rule in general existence. I mean, in business, he's talking here in business and so on. You know, very nice piece here about 
about the, the look the bottom line is why are you working why are you working because you think you're so brilliant and you're going to make a lot of money or you're working because you want to be a keli for God's blessing and the only way to be a keli is through, is, is through work that's, that's the, the, the key difference of, of two approaches obviously we all have hybrids as well you know you can have a mix of both um a bottom line is the the, the, the smak says it's a love to say I am a self-made man is a isu uh, because it's like the, it's, it's the ultimate self-worship but it's also the ultimate nesayin it's very difficult a person who's really ex- succeeded especially if they worked hard very hard for them to accept that um, that they're not that they that's not about them because it is that, you know tiny periklam he explains how much mm-hmm. How much a person is invested? Why this duck is such a big mitzvah? We haven't, even, we haven't even begun the next chapter. We're reviewing the previous one. Why this duck is such a big mitzvah is because money is high enough. You know, Perik Lamed Zion is one of the most, I think, one of the most revolutionary chapters, especially even from economic theory, because he explains the power of money. That every never, we all know the nefesh abamis has power, right? We all have our tivus. He says, when it comes to money. The Nefesh Abamis is every, all the whole Nefesh Abamis is invested in it because money reflects everything. Your ego, your time, your energy. It's the symbol. The opposite of, you know, you talk about numbers, symbol of Kshivas. Money is the symbol of, of, of everything. Your whole you is, that's why, that's why money is, people about money are, are crazier than almost anything in life. People will talk more about their intimate lives than they'll talk about their money. Yeah? Because money is a symbol. And Tanya, he says, that's Chaya Nafshe. And that's why it's so hard, because it's a whole Nefesh Abam. It's not just a part of it. You know, when you eat, you have a type of for a piece of food. It's a type of whatever, the type of your eyes, the type of your stomach, the type of your, your, your fantasies. When it comes to money, it's the type of all of you, because it's Chaya Nafshe. So that just shows you that, that people, how, how people are... So when a person is successful, it's very easy, it's very hard. That's why it's a love. The smak says it's a love. Keich v'yetzim is a isra, to say that I am self-made. Maybe that's why he was so upset about it. And uh, to say, uh, 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 it says, uh, uh, what's the lesson there? That Hashem, keich v'yetzim yod yasin is a chayel hazeh, was the end of the Pasuk. Kihunas l'chayel. Kihunas l'chayel, keich v'yetzim That God is the one that gives the power. But the the... The explanation of it is the, the reason you need the Ishtadlus, your effort is because it has to come down into, into this world. It's essentially the same reason why we need Aveda. Because God wants a partner here. He wants a partner. He wants to make a Dira B'Takhtenim. We are the ones that implement God's resources. But look, the concept of Zdaka in, in Chassidus especially, based on the Medrash, when David asks Hashem, why did you Lama Bara? But also, Shirim Vanim, why do you create wealthy and the poor? Liyak has a Liyazov. God could have, God has all the money in the world. He could have distributed it equally. It's essentially the question that all the, that both Marx and, uh, and Adam, uh, Adam Smith addressed, which was the, 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 cla- the class distinctions. Why did God make it that there should be class distinctions? Let everybody be equal. So Hashem answers him. Chesedem is my Yitzhudu. Who's going to do Chesedem? And so Chassidus explains it, which means if you take it all the way, it means that the only reason one person has more is not because he has more, it's because God trusted him with a pakodin. Here, I'm giving you more because you should have the wisdom to be my partner and give it, distribute it, and it should be equal. But how many people know that? Once it's yours, you don't convince yourself, you don't think it's just given to you on loan or to watch. You see yourself as mine, okay, and I'll be benevolent and I'll give some to another. But really, the concept of Zdok is you're really giving something that was given to you. The Rebbe explains, Rebbe, why is Rebbe Mechabed Ashirim? Rebbe Nakadish would honor the wealthy. What kind of work was it? He was, uh, he was bought by money? The answer is because he saw that they were blessed by Hashem with that power. God trusted them. So God trusts a certain individual more by giving him more wealth because he trusts that he will have the wisdom to share. So Rebbe was Mechabed him for that, for that honor. That's why he honored him. I mean, basically, it's, it's, it's all about this partnership. But going back to, bring it back to what this chapter does, really, it helps us a little concretize, you know, the, the, it's more of an abstract concept, Mispera Eris, Mispera Kalim. He didn't firesh, which we're going to do now, he didn't, like, conclude it, but it appears that he's saying that these two things, the number of energies, the number of containers, meaning the appreciating quality 
and appreciate in quantity is essentially the, the difference between, let's say, Tzvah Shemayim and Tzvah Aretz. So in heaven, each celestial body individually, you can count many misput Tzvah. Doesn't it, does it ever say many misput uh, Did he ask a question like that? That God ever counts the Tzvah Aretz? I don't think so. In other words, so the individual counting, basically, Eshedar Kelimnes is referring to Tzvah Shamayim, because there every individual body is, has Kayach Ha'enshef, lasts forever. Where on earth, it's only the species, meaning not every individual uh, creature on earth. So therefore, basically, you see there that Tzvah Shamayim, you see more openly the Ashgacha. You see more openly God's providence, you see more openly the revelation. Because you see the value. Because the value of each individual expresses that infinity. Where on earth you only see it in the species. That's the key, the, the point here. So, so therefore number, individual number, counting actually every, every star, counting every celestial body, is a type of, it's not a thing about quantity, it's appreciating the quality of it. And similarly, is counting Israel, Misham Yisrael. The counting of them is because of their value, or the words of the Shalah from the Medrash that it's because of the Gadam Shkharas Ashchina. By counting them, you cause the actual Shchina to rest. So let's see how he's going to spell it out here. So we'll continue page one sixty nine, chapter Peches eighty eight. And the same thing, ah, oh, okay, here's it specifically. So just like we just spoke the last line of the last chapter. That was the last line. Because, because that gufa, that they have the more, more revealed divine providence, that's why Kayambi is because of their, their quality. Kamay Kain, the same thing is the counting and the number of the souls of Israel. Shazal Gamkim Shivus. That too comes because of the Khshivus, the value. or Pasha Aleph. Pasha Aleph, sorry. Because remember, he spoke, he brought the Meish Meish already. Remember when he brought the Ela, uh, what was the Lashon there? Ela Shmeish Meish 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 Shivim Nefesh. There was the two countings. The Shivim Nefesh before they went to Mitzrayim, which was the Zriya, and when they came out of Mitzrayim. Now, okay, that's before. Shaboyim. It says, what it says about the Shem is that Lein Lushan, Lushan Hashmom. So it says, Kishem, what is the Lashon there? Shem Naksa. Shame Naila, right? The, the Lashon is the same thing. Yeah. Okay, anyway, but no, I'm saying that the counting was, that was the counting when they went into Mitzrayim. When they came out of Mitzrayim, they must also counted them because of that. So he says, like, what's the Medrash? says, Shkulim Yisro Ketzva HaShamayim. Oh. See, so Pashat finding Mamish, the Medrash says that, that the Yisro are compared to the celestial bodies of heaven. Cele- the, the, basically the army. Tzva means the soldiers or army. The army in heaven refers to the celestial bodies in heaven. Svaharis refers to the army below, means God's creatures on earth. It's just an expression. So right here you see the Medrash par- um, compares what we just discussed at length in the previous chapter about that each individual star, each individual celestial body is counted because it's valued. Because of its value, same thing is with Yisro. Now you know we see there's a trillion stars. I don't know if the Pope so much. <laughs> So, okay, and each one is is yeah, and beyond. What's a trillion in the scheme of things? <laughs> Just a number. A trillion here and a trillion here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A nice diamond. It's 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 something special. Now that they've discovered a new planet, that's the host. Most of the surface of the planet is pure diamonds. They just discovered it. I mean, can you imagine? The, the diamonds would be nothing. It'd be like the, the old joke about the world with mud. You know, the mud was valuable. Okay, do it. Ashgachal neshamis yisrael mishem havayadafke. 
And he's comparing it now. This is like the... He's, 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 remember, just the flow here. He began with this. He began that that's Esther Da'akalim and brought the Medrash about this misper counting Eden. If you remember, the previous chapter was even the other Pasuk. So it's all tying it all together. That the misper is a level of Lo'ya Sofer because if misper reflects on Chshivus, Chshivus is already beyond counting. Like when you say, let's say a mother or a father, you ask them, you have, you have Baruch Hashem, let's say nine children. So it's not nine as the number nine. Each one of them has value that's much more than a number. So for some people, they just care about the number. Nine, you know, nine dependents. Okay, the IRS, you have nine uh, deductions. So it's a, it's a technical matter. Um, but for a parent, it's not about nine. It's each one has a value that's beyond... In other words, the number is a, is a value beyond value. That's really what he wants to show here. That this world of quantity, if you dig deep enough, is really svidus. Not svidus, Melosh and Misper, as the misper of Kalim, of just the containers. Containers give you the... Now you know you have nine kids. But misper the Eidus is telling you these nine are nine uh, infinitely valuable individuals. That's why... Where's the, what's the lush in there? You know, Malikot Lekula, Malikot Lepolga. So the expression about life, life is not, uh, is, is not defined by numbers. The Din, the Rebbe brings this when it talks about Yochid and Rabbim. Like the Din, the Rambam says that if, a, if a, God forbid, a, a, a city is surrounded and they say, give us one person, you're not allowed to give that one person. Unless they specify which one. Right. And only music. Right. Why, why, why are you not allowed to give one person? Because it's not a matter of numbers, it's quality. Life is quality, it's not quantity. It's quantity. You could say, I save a million, I give up one. But when it comes, but there's an expression, besides uh, the expression why uh, life is... This, that's the lesson? Yeah, yeah, that's the expression, but there's also another one. Two people are in the desert. Yeah. But that one, yeah. not Right. And there is a, then, then, if it's Hayah So then you take it for yourself, yeah. Right. Why is your life more valuable than another's? Um, look, the, be, the best place to apply it is when you see people worshipping superficial value. That's the bottom line. That's like quantity at its worst. He's not even, he's not even bringing that example here yet because it's Caleb of Atzillus. But... After a long evolution, the fact that we can value mamish tusin, things that have absolutely no value, and we can value it more than something that has great value, is a perfect example. You know, remember the classic story? What was his name? The great violinist, one of the great world violinists. They tried the example. They tried it in a Washington train station. His name was. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. He stood in the station. He sat down like a poor guy. Started playing the, mo- the most expensive violin that's worth yeah, over a million bucks, and right. playing the most beautiful music. And they have videotapes. Everybody runs by. You know, a few people throw coins. Nobody appreciates it. This is a guy they pay hundreds of thousands. They pay thousands of dollars to go see him in a, if it was in an opera house. The only ones that stop are children. They find few children stop because their children, I guess, sense that there's something uh, special. Now, just to show you, the point is when people are busy and they, yeah. We're busy. We value what we value is uh, external. Yeah. In other words, take take this whole thing of Eris and Kalim and and take it down thousands of levels lower. You know, where the Eris is completely concealed and all you have is Kalim. You have a world. This is why the world is called Elma Klippus. What's a Klippa? Klippa doesn't mean a bad thing. A Klippa is a shell, a husk. So the the Shalos says, why is it called Klippa? Because a Klippa was there to shame the Sapri. The value of an orange peel is to protect the fruit. But imagine you forget there's a fruit. And all you know is the peel. You worship the peel. You don't even know there's a fruit inside. That's why it's called clippers. So clippers is not because... It's, per se, clippers is actually necessary to protect and preserve. But if you start thinking there's only a clip, only potato peels and eggshells, then you have a world that... that, 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 that clip is... Uh, superficial. Yeah, this is what happened out of Shvira When the energy is concealed and the, and the kalim shatter... This is what you have left. In Atzilus, obviously, it's all aligned. But here, the Rebbe Rashab is explaining the anatomy of the structure of existence. Everything in existence is an Eir and a Keli. Everything. And this table, this. This is what we call the sparks. Yeah, a piece of food. But we, here there's a disordinate, there's a disproportionate, disordinate balance 
that kalim are what we worship. We worship externals. And we, we study and try to understand there's something inside. So this is the, the this is already the the grotesque distortion of someone of quantity and quality gone completely two different directions. Like I said, the expression there are people who know the price of everything and the value of nothing. You ever hear that expression? You know the price of everything and the value of nothing. So you can buy anything, but they don't have value. You know the Rebbe brings the example of the the big potter who was traveling and he saw this guy, uh, this farmer. You know, uh, swaying with his uh, sheath, sheath, you know, to cut the, huh? yeah, with the sickle. And he liked the flow. He liked how he looked. You know, he'll pay him to come and do it for him, so he should watch it. You know, it's, it's, he liked. And, and here you don't have to sweat in the sun. You don't have to work so hard. And I'll pay you double, triple. And after one day, he quits. Because, why? Because he's not achieving anything. So the guy had the value. He thought that, the, you know, the chitzenis, he likes this, this, but the, the thing of the quality. I mean, best, but another example, Adam Reitzah B'Kav Shalei Yesu Metisha Kam Shalchaveri. Right there. Nine, a person has more value, desires more one, one measure through your own effort than nine that you get from somebody. But nine is nine times as much. You could buy nine times as much. So quantity, it's more, but quality, no way. Quality, this is hard-earned, mine. And I'm just giving examples of quantity and quality. Now, obviously, the best is to have the nine and it should be yours. That's the best. <laughs> Uh, you know, so okay. So Nisham is Yisrael compared to Tzvah Shamayim, and now he's comparing it also to remember the last chapter. He said Tzvah Shamayim has gacha from Shem Havaya, right? Spoke about two types of hashgacha. Everything God controls. The question is how concealed it is. That's the question. Okidur the hashgacha on Nisham is Yisrael, Meshem Havaya dafke. The hashgacha, the precise providence is there. Another good word for hashgacha. What's a mashgiach in the kitchen called? Uh, Supervise. God supervises. Okay, and providence, I guess, is the best. Hashgacha means the care, the watching. It's more than just a mashgiach is, is a supervisor. It's more like it's like a parent um, nurturing, guiding. Huh? Yeah, guiding. providing, guiding, caring, watching over. So we know it's from Shem Havayadav. Because a neshama is also eternal, like the celestial bodies. Beish, individually. And the reason, the cause for the eternity of a soul. Okay, so it's even more. The nitzchis of a soul is even far greater than the cause of this eternity of the celestial bodies. Because they are fundamental creature, fundamentally creatures. And their sustenance and... And uh, perpetuation. It's only because of a kayach outside of them. A divine, infinite kayach that gives them and says, I want you, chazakim kiyemi bottom, as we learned earlier. So it's still a revelation of divine. But it's not, from, not, not due to their own personality. Their own personality, if you were to dissect a sun, it has the same properties as things on earth. It has hydrogen, it has oxygen, it has other forces. It doesn't have anything more. So why is that eternal, and why here on, on earth something like that would not last? I understand it's far greater and so on, it's bigger. I'm not talking about the size of it. You know? Because there's a kayach ain't safe in it. Vigam ze ain't ebchines islapshes behem. And a second thing. Besides that it's a nivra, it's a creature, also the kayach ain't safe is not, the divine is not islapshes. It's like when you throw a stone. I don't know if he's going to use that example. When you throw a stone, so while the stone is flying, it has power. It has your power. It's not like your, your power has now changed the stone and has become a bird. It's not a flying stone. It's a stone that you impose power and actually to defy gravity. So the stone, as long as, long as that's why the stone will fall as soon as, you, um, as, soon as your power uh, dissipates. So it's not a bislapsus. It didn't change the personality of the creature called the Tzvah it's a force from outside. As it's known, it's impossible for something that is a finite entity to have in it an energy and life force that's infinite. Yeah, if you throw a stone in, in outer space, it'll go, unless it's, you can see, the only reason it, here is it, it stops is because of other... Things. Yeah, but there it continues flying, not because it has power to fly, it's because there's no gravity to stop it. No opposition. Right, no right. opposition. Right, exactly. Not because it suddenly became uh, a, a flying a power to fly. That, which is the first case? The first case is, you know, you 
force still is in it, though. The force is still in it. And what's the question? What, but the question is whether it's a slapshus. That's called a slapshus or maiver. Meaning, you, you can take a stone. He's going to say in a minute. Slapshus means that the thing itself becomes infinite. That's a whole different world. That's a different picture. Here, God is giving the power to something on its own that does, that's gvul, to have bleak gvul power, essentially. Chazakim kiyemi baram. Not on their own. Huh? Not on their own, because I can't it's the same thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly like the stone. I'm saying. That means not, I'm just explaining what means not islapsus. Kiyadua, why it means not islapsus? Because the Baal Gvul doesn't have the power of a Bilti Bulgbul. Yeah. Here it is. That the infinite divine power is outside of them. It doesn't unite with them. It only perpetuates their existence. Keeps them going, basically. Like it sells elsewhere. However, souls are divine in their fundamental nature. Fundamental core personality. Like we say, the soul that you've still given me is pure. What means pure? The pure. In the, that means that in their root in Atzilis, the Gamla Maila Matzilis. And also higher than Atzilis. Yeah, we learned this before. Yeah, we learned this before. I'm trying to remember where. We also learned about, um, if you remember, I think we also learned, do you remember somewhere, where, where was it about? Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the Peul of the Makif. Remember, we spoke about the effect of Adenu Zenu. Maybe the one before that. He spoke about Haremamus Hateva Tenes that you recognize in Teva the the Alakus in it. It also is very reminiscent to this idea. Okay, I'll look later. That's earlier. That was the effect of transcendence on on existence. Here he's not talking transcendence. Here here he's talking within Misper. Here it's all. Obviously, it's all connected. Okay, do as you know, as you know, as it's known. What's the meaning of tahiri? What does tahiri mean? Pure, in Hebrew, but tahiri. So remember, we spoke tahiri law, tahiri tata. That's where he spoke about. So that's tahiri. He begins tahiri law. It's a level of tahiri law. Let me just uh, refresh ourselves. What's tahiri law? So chapters back, tahiri law is explained in different places, different ways. But in Hamshachayim Beis. Sometimes Tiri Law Tatar are both after the Tzimtzum. The Rebbe has a footnote about it in Ranat. But, he, but generally speaking, Tiri Law is the is the Sof, Lifniat Tzimtzum, meaning the lowest levels, Malchus, the Ein Sof, like this, Eigel right, HaGadol. Right, 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 right. So Tehira literally can be translated pure. It could also be translated uh, shining, from the word shining, like uh, what's the Lashon he used there? Uh, um, no, no, there's... Um, Shemayim Mesapim Kveit Kale. Glow, but also no shining. Where is the shining? It's Gol of Gelifu B'Tehiri Law. That's the Lashon. And Zaya goes, But Eish HaMenisa Damalka, chopped out or carved out or... Yeah, carved out. Gol of Gelifu or B'Tehiri Law. That's where the word comes from. Anyway, shining, higher shining. Bottom line is referring to a light, uh, an energy form. But Tehiri Law, it's usually the Eagle HaGadl. What's the Eagle HaGadl? The Great Sphere. That uh, before the Tzimtzum, Eden saw filled all of reality. The Tzimtzum created, so to speak, a black hole. It like concealed it, only concealed. And what's left, so to speak, in the in the in the place where the Cholol is, which is the empty space, what's left is a Rishima, is a residue. But so, a dot. How are the Kudus are Rishima? There's different ways. Yeah. Okay, fine. And then, and then there is uh, the the Eirein Sof. The Eirein Sof remains in the form of an eagle. Obviously, all this is not physical; it's just figurative. But it's for us to be able to imagine. So, eagle agadol tehiri law is that energy before the tzimtzum. Kuf chafat. Second sefer. He says that in the mishum, which I never, I didn't understand what it meant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, I know. I, I was referring to a different thing. So the, look at Ranat. There's a whole mimer. There's a whole footnote from the Rebbe that explains it in detail. This point. What well, means in the Kudus Sometimes in the Rishimu, 
It's called like the Kudus Hayud. We just learned it also, two chapters. Uh, okay, but this is not for now. This is not here. And uh, I just told you, look in that mind, the Rebbe speaks about. But let's go back. That's Tehiri Allah. Tehiri Tata is the same, from there emanates the energy after the Tzimtzum, is generally Tehiri Tata refers to Adam Kadman. So it's the first entity, reality, after the Tzimtzum. So generally those are the two Tehiri Allah, Tehiri Tata. But there are differences. Sometimes it actually speaks about Tehiri Tata before the Tzimtzum too. Because when you break it down further, and sometimes the Tehiri Allah is after the Tzimtzum. Anyway. But bottom line here is, Shanshatu bi Tehiri, Tzimtzum Tehiri Allah. He's pointing out that it's higher than Atzilus. That's for sure. Tehiri Allah is higher than Atzilus. Now he's in parentheses. So, so what do we establish? That is opposed to the celestial bodies, which are just Nivroim, creatures. That have in them superimposed the Kayach HaEinsef. That's not part of them. It's from outside of them. Neshamas themselves are Elikus. Which, by the way, explains another thing. You know, we know that Avraham Avinu, when he went to search for God, so first he searched, he realized it's not uh, the idols, he realized it's not earth, so he went, what did he look at? It's the sun and the moon. And what? And he came to the determination, it's not them also, why not? They have Kayach Ha'ensof, and there's Chazakim Kayemi Bottom, you study them. So it says, because it's the sun set and the moon. Which of course is more than that. He knew the sun also rose, so he understood that the sun is not didn't, didn't, didn't die. The answer is because of this, because he realized that the sun and the moon are just an extension of Earth. It's still a nivra, even if it has a, a power. He realized it can't be its own power because it's a balgvul on its own. So, so that's why he went How to search further. From, from what you were just saying, how does he know that? Because we only see the effects of God. We don't see. Because you saw, you study the sun and moon, you see their physical items. They're part of Earth. They're just part. They're just distant from us, and you see that they're, they're part of existence. What, what, you what, mean scientifically was able to do that? In those days? Why not? What do you need science for? All you need is common sense. Your common sense. You see something in the sky. So in the beginning, you think it's very big because it's out there. It's far from you. But then you start studying. You realize it's just this, just far. Well, clearly he didn't stop there. Thank God. Had he stopped there, we no, wouldn't be around. The <laughs> process of elimination. The same reason why. Why can't he say his father is not God? His father is such a powerful guy. He grew a little older. He realizes his father is just a human being, like like all of us realize. You know, when we're young, we think our father is God. When he said the sun set, he saw that it's in motion. That it's not in one place. Yeah, that, that's a different explanation. Just had an emotion. He realized it's, but he realized it's also subject to the same rules. It's, it's, it's not. It's not its own. Uh, it's like program. Essentially. Um, Listen, next time I speak to Avram Avinu, I'll ask him what, what happened. What he, what he came to realize. <laughs> now he says, Okay, so bottom line is, Nisham itself is a lakus from Tiri Allah or even higher. I'm sorry, from Atsilus or even higher, Tiri Allah. And even though in some places it says that the root, I'm just thinking maybe it means Tehiri Law. Let's read it, we'll see. Probably in the Because Shar Sham, Loshan Rabbim. Yeah. 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 Okay, because right now he's trying to compare this all to Mispera Eris, remember. Not then. But Kama Mekemes, Shemidabrim, Bezeg, Gamba Bedreg. One second, how does he read this? Shemakama, Shemakama, Mokam, Shemakama, Mekemes, Shemakama, Mekemes, Shashimum, Shemakama, Mekemes, Gamway. But Kama Mekemes, Shemidabrim, Bezeg, Gamba Bedreg. Let me just read it to myself as I know it. Okay, so the, the language is a little, uh, just needs a little uh, explaining. Because sometimes, usually you don't say, Ima Yesha Bekam It usually says, Ima Yesha Mavur Bekam Okay, but that's what he means. So even though, here's how it goes. 
even though some places it says that the root of the neshamis is in is in keich hagvul, which is, means garmui, the, the root of the kelim, not the root of the eris. And he goes further. And bekama became mishem medaben bezeh gam bemadregish lifniat simtum. And in some places we discuss it even in levels before the simtum, meaning not the keich hagvul after the simtum and garmui, but also lifniat simtum. It's like two bekama again. One bekama came is in general it's garmui, and sometimes it's also. Yeah, yeah. Shazet inyan, and this is all. This is still a question. It's all a qualification. Shazet inyan. What is this in Shemach Tav Shal Kadmul Chol Dover? This is the meaning of what we say. The thought of Israel precedes everything. Everything. What is Dover? The Dover who begins at Simtum. Dover is referring to Simtum. O Machshav Shal Kadmul Chol Dover. And we say the thought of Israel precedes everything. Is Hainu Bchinas Eisis Arashim Shalif Niat Simtum. Meaning the letters of the Rishimu, the letters of the of of the Rishimu, which is made up of letters as they are before the Tzimtzum, which is the Keich Hagvul and the root of the Kalim. This is the power of Gvul Shabayin Seif. Remember, not the power of Gvul of Eris, the root of Eir. He spoke at length earlier that this is different than the Rishimu's Keich Hagvul is the power of Gvul to create Kalim, contain. Then is the power of Gvul of that God wants to have ten and not infinite spheres. It's two different things. Makol Mokim, this is the qualification. Even according to this, the interpretation that it's Kalim and not Eiris, and all the way in the root, it's also Ain Seif Mamish. It's not like the Tzva Shamayim. And so in Gersh HaKiddush he says clearly, Nisham has come from Shem Avaya, which is consistent with what he's saying here, that the Hashgach is from Shem Avaya. Avaya usually is Eris, not Kalim, just for the record. Like it says, Ki, ki Chilik Havaya. It doesn't say Chilik Kalikim. Chilik Havaya. This is what he said in Shem Sanayim in the Kus Mamash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bottom line is, this parenthesis only qualifies in saying, okay, it says Tehidehi. Tehidehi law is usually Eir. So meaning that the Shamas themselves are Tahira are godliness, a godly energy. And even in some places it says that Kekha Gvul and their Kalim, and even Kalim Lifnia Tsimtsum, the Aci is Harashimu, which is not what he's discussing here. Remember, because here he's talking how it's Mispra Aidus, not Mispra Kalim. Even according to that, it's still divine. So it doesn't contradict fundamentally what he's saying here, just on a different level. There's still Kayakha Insef, in other words. I mean, just for clarification purposes, because a few people have asked me this, also that I've seen the class. Generally speaking, briefly, it's really three levels. You have you have the divine, the, the kshedish, the root of transcendent energy, the root of save of kalalman, is er in sof habligvul before the tzimtzum. It's bligvul. We spoke earlier. It doesn't have does not defined in any possible way. Within that arose a rotsen for Gvul. That's not Kalim yet. That's Eir HaGvul. That's the root of Mamalak The energy that now will be defined by Chach Mabin Chesed Vura. But it's still energy. Then there's a third thing. The root of Kalim. What will confine this energy? What will allow what we have today? Kalim be separate from Eir and so on. And that's the root of the Eisi Sarashimu, that's called Keich HaGvul Shebein Sof, that God wants a power of Gvul, actual structure, as opposed to the energy that's defined by structure. That's how Ayim Beis explains things. Some places in Chassidus, Ayim Beis qualifies, he says, speaks Eir as being, even Eir, doesn't speak about Eir as Gvul, speaks only that the Eser Sphere Sagnuzes, the ten hidden spheres, are only Kalim, the root of the Kalim. The Paradis says that. But according to Ayim Beis, and this is critical because throughout he keeps the steam, is the Eser Sphere Sagnuzis, like an Atsilis, also has subtly, subtly Eris and Kalim, so to speak, with Nehatsim, the root of Eris and Kalim. So you really have three things. You have the root of Sev of Kalaman, that's, you could say Sphere of St. Katz, or something like that, or higher or lower than that. Then you have the root of the Eris Agvulim, and then you have the root of the Kalim. Just pointing this out. And Ayin Beis, he makes it very clear that this is the two different things. He says clearly, the Pardis says, Eser Sphere Sagnus is the root of the containers. But according to what we're learning here, Eser Sphere Sagnus is also the root of the energies. Okay, well, yeah, the second interpretation is that the root of the root is from Atmos, 
You have to say that because ultimately when Mashiach comes, the group everything comes from Matzmus. But, but the group is going to be nurturing the neshama. The, the, the that's according to all opinions. But that doesn't right. change anything. No, I'm saying what you're saying now is no matter how you twist it, it's like that. It has a higher source. Though. That's that, but that's according to all. This doesn't change. What I just explained was three levels. At the end of the day, the kalim always have a higher source, yeah, yeah. higher than everything. But that's another story, because the power to the dira betachtenim is an atzmos, because God tachtenim. Yeah. Remember, er hagvul is not tachtenim, and kalim relate to tachtenim. That's the the key thing. Well, they're part of relating to Takhtenim. They're not Takhtenim either. Takhtenim is a physical world. That's all Hula Vade Bekech. Only Atmos can create. So this is like a major thing between Pardis and. Yeah, it's a major. Yeah, yeah, it's a question of Eris Mitsuyorim. It's exactly correct. But what does it add to. to, to it, I've discussed this, you know, how many hours? It adds to the equation. It makes the Akhdus much deeper if you have Eris Mitsuyorim. Because if, if, you, if you skip from Sev of. For us to, go to Kalim, then the end of the day is Eir doesn't relate to Gvul. Only Kalim do. That's the key. But I said, like example, example in Aveda would be that Lashed Lavi, when you make a Mibrach and a Mitzvah, is the Shir Prati only a stepping stone? Or is it also a Lukus? You could say the Shir is what God wants right now, but the bottom line is Hashem Kedushan of the of Tzivano. But the Gvul does not, is not, doesn't matter that much. I mean, it matters in the negate to the Mitzvah, but it doesn't matter in the big scheme of things. That would be the difference. Like what I said, the Pasuk. You don't have Eris. Why is there Mektan and Vagdelam? Why, you know, that's it. But you want to also have that still remains a structure of Mektan and Vagdelam, even as Kulim Yedes. In other words, you really want a combination of Vul and Vul. It's, it's Bedakas is the Machlekas between the Rambam and the Ramban about ultimate Schar. The Ram, Rambam says ultimate schar is Tchis is only a stage and it goes back to Neshomis Nenem Ziv Ashkina because Gashmis because Gashmis is inferior how could a Gvul ultimately relate to the highest levels and the Ramban the Chesidus Paskins that Tchis HaMesim Neshomis Begufim is the ultimate because the Atmos is higher than Gvul and Bli Gvul so, you don't pass like the Rambam how come when it comes to Yanni Mashiach he said the Rambam is the ultimate uh, Every word he says, we follow. You know, you don't, you know the answer of that to that. No, you don't know the answer no, to that. Nobody that argues. That's number one. Yeah. Exactly. If that is all argued, then as past and otherwise, we would go different. It wouldn't be the final. Or the Ramban. Nobody. That's number one. Number two. Uh, we're only going that that is all, and that Al Tareb a Paskin like the Ram, Ramban. So the question is on them. I mean, if, if they Paskin one time like the Ramban, one time. The, like the Rambam, that's that. <laughs> well, first of all, the Rambam is not the final authority in everything. The Rambam is a, 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 a sefer halachas. And there's calling. If the Ramban would disagree with him about this, it would be a different story. You see this passage to Moshe, like the Rambam, that the halachas, like Shmuel, that they've been all about the halachas, that they've been all about the halachas, that they've been that means the Bismillah is going to be handled. No, it's not going to come to Shemayim. The Rambam goes, why is the Rambam saying the Bismillah? Every word that Rambam says about Mashiach is the same. That's not the, that's not the, the, I would not interpret it that way at all. Because the Rambam is only about Ishaloche. He's only about Halacha that talks about it. Anyway. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Okay. I just wanted to say this for clarity purposes. That's why he's bavarning it. Okay. So here we're talking, however, Mispera Eris. Just remember that. Vagam Kamesha Baba Biya. And even how the Neshama comes down in Biya, Briyatsi, the Shishi, Bikinis Nivra, that it's a creature. Hari Yogamkin Elokus Mamish Kaneido Mavur, Bamukam Makamacha. It's also Mamish godliness, as is known and explained elsewhere. So this is Neshamesh and Nesat to be Tehedi in its root. In Atzillus or higher. So you could say, okay, in its root it's Elokus. You know, if that's the case, you could also say about Tzvah Shamayim in their root. They also have Ruchin the Kech. So he says, no. Gam Kamoy, even how Neshama comes down. That's why he's saying Neshamesh and Nesat to be, what is the Lashon? Tehedi he. Atta Barasa, Atta Yitzat, Atta Nefach to be. So even as it comes in Biyah, and it's in a Tzir of a Nivra, B'chinis Nivra, in a state of a Nivra, it's also... Mamish alakus, like it's known and explained elsewhere. And the parentheses, why? Why is that the case? You could ask one second. Everything as it comes down, 
The root is concealed. Why does the neshama retain its divine properties even when it's a uh, nivra? Because in its root, it's from primi sachayis. If it was from chitzeni sachayis, it would not retain it. Like it says in the Gersh Shuvah there. That's why when it comes down below, it's also the, it's also divine. In other words, this basically explains you know a fundamental question people ask. If there's a we learn Shariq Vamuna that and every second, every physical thing in this world, every object, every fiber of existence has constant renewal of godliness, we just don't see it. If we saw it, it couldn't last. Why then do we stand up when we bring a safer tater in a room? And not when uh, every object, every object is godly. What's the difference? So you could say the difference is only giluyim, that what in a safer tater is more revealed. First of all, we see it in a safer tater as much as we see it in a table. You know, of our eyes. But that's limited eyes. That's, that, that, that's the question. And the answer is, it's not just it's more revealed, less revealed. It's because fundamentally, when you when you take a cloth, which is which was was, was once the same dvar Hashem like a table or anything, and you makadish it, and you as a and you and you write divrei kedusha on it, after matan teda you got the power to change the gashmis of it. It's not just you you you, you it's not a dover chutzeni. The gashmis of it becomes a chefza shel kedusha, and therefore it it fundamentally changed. What does it mean? It means you're bringing down a level of alakuz that is actually changing the gashmis of this object. Because you follow the exact, the, the exact ingredients. Yeah, yeah, do that. It exactly. It in any way. It doesn't matter. That goes back to the shear. Yeah, exactly. But my point is that even though our physical eyes don't see the difference, but that safer tater now is a, is a changed gashmis. It's not the same gashmis. Same thing with Eretz Yisrael. Why is Eretz Yisrael holier than other lands? Because the same thing. It's an Eretz like any land. You know, it has hard and quiet. You know, it has mountains and valleys and trees and and animals and so on. But because Eni Hashem because God chose it, well, however you explain it, the same thing with Harabayas, all the Eser Gedushas, the Ten Gedushas. No, it's Gedusha means basically this, that when you take a, a higher level of Elokus, that it saturates and completely permeates a physical thing, that physical thing forever is changed. And Gedusha Lezazim Mkema, like with Harabayas, doesn't matter, you could destroy the base of Amigdash, the land, the earth, the, the space there is forever, forever holy. When it comes to, let's say, the Mishkan, or even Matan Teda, it says after they left that place, it didn't remain. Why? Because it was only a uh, it was only an external elokus that was revealed in the physical. Now, I'm not talking about the experience. For the Gavra, it remains for us. But the physical space, the places where they traveled through the, uh, through the Midbar with the Mishkan, did not permeate the physical space. I'm just giving an example where in the Shama, even as it comes down, it retains... Because it's coming from a level of alakuz that saturates it in that type of uh, fashion. I don't understand a lot. He's comparing over here the verses the neshama to the cholesterol bodies in the sky. Cholesterol bodies in the sky, as great as they are, they're physical beings. They're gesha, they're tangent. There's some there. Yeah, yes, that's the time. But the fact it's the goof. There's the gesha. Okay. The neshama is not a goof. The neshama is a spiritual being. The Ruch is a being. So certainly, it's, it's in the Finitsky. Even if we talk about a Sefer Taita, the Kedusha for Sefer Taita, you know, the, it, it only lasts as long as the physical body of the Sefer Taita. The Sefer Taita should be alone, you bury it, right? Once yeah, you bury it, then it's not. But if it's a puzzle, so what, what, you still stand so, up with somebody who wants Oh, yeah, 100%. But why no, no, there's the AC is Perkis Ba'avir, first yeah, of all. Why should it rot? It should be hide it. The Kedusha no, so, bury it. So, it should never rot. So why is the body of a Jew rot? It can ask the same so question. Because it's a book. Anything which is a goof doesn't last. Well, no, no, but, but, but by the way, Chesidus asks why a goof Kaddish, which is also Kaddish. So goof in the Lehun Kaddish. So by real goof Kaddish doesn't matter. Right, exactly. And and even and one second, and even everyone does the etzim lose, and yeah. everything something yeah. remains. Right. No, okay. Now the point I only wanted to explain what he meant when he said not just in Tehedihi, but also when it comes down in a goof, yeah. that it retains that element. So I just wanted to explain it as a dogma. Of something that permeates even as it comes down into a nivra state. That's all. Because you could argue, I tell you, malachim don't work that way. Malachim are are, are not svoshemayim. They're not physical, but they don't. When they come down lamata, they don't retain. They they become nefilim. They don't. They don't have that power. So you could have a ruchnizdik entity that does not. They got dressed in a body. Yeah, I'm saying no, but when a neshama gets dressed in a body, it's not the case. Yeah. And neshama 
That, that, that's what, the point being here is that it's not just a neshama, it's ruchnius. Because it's specifically a neshama. Because uh, a ruchnius, listen, chesed atzilus is ruchnius, but when it comes into gashmius, into mayim, mayim is not, is not mitzchim. You know, like in that sense. Um, it's just, I think, and listen, that's not Michael, he's making the comparison. He's wanting to say that. No, the the, the rep is stressed that there's something specific in Swash and Mayim, there's a special Kaya. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mashenkin, Avil, Avil, then he says, Avil Anasham is Harihim el Kusma Mashiach. There's two things he says. Swash and Mayim, number one, is that it's uh, it's not, it's not. Uh, it's it's uh, not be slapshus. Yeah, mechutz and not right exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not, we're not. Yeah, exactly. The, what I'm saying is only to explain the the, the distinctions here. Um, it's not the same. Look, we still have a dilemma here because at the end of the day, based on this, we say tzvah ha'aretz is not kayom and beish. He's going to say neshamas are kayom and beish even more than tzvah shamayim. But neshamas begufim are not kayom bish, right? The ish doesn't. Have, so, so, so there's something that happens. Even though a soul comes down and lives its life in a body, the body doesn't remain forever. Maybe the etzam lose. Maybe that's the difference. So then, at the end of the day, what's the difference between us and stones, or or other tzvaha arets that are kayom like animals? What's the difference between us? And animals also have a a shadish of a, some shadish, not the neshamas shadish. I'm, I'm just pointing this out. The animal is the animal dies, then the shomer is. There's a there's a, there's a letter from the Reb Marash about this, you know. Yeah, yeah. Reb Marash. Reb Marash. He asks about the 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 nefoshes of enough of. He compares whether an animal is what happens to their souls. Yeah, you're gonna hurt a lot of people because people who love their dogs they think that the souls go on to. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't remember exactly. It's printed in Migdalays, the letter of the Rabbi Rash, a very interesting letter. I think it's printed around the spot already. I, no, he def- definitely distinguishes and says that. I'm not sure what he says. I think he says two things there. I think some, some place he says that something... The question is not whether it lasts. The question is whether it lasts as a nefesh of the animal. There's something for sure lasts. It's, it's, it has some spirit in it. Like any Dvar uh, Lakim, you know. Um... I don't remember exactly. I have to look it up. But it's definitely not compared to Nishami. You can Migdal Ace. from, you know, that uh, Moonshine Prince. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there he brings, he brings a very interesting... Uh, someone asks him, and he thinks it's a Shailan or Truva, like. Yeah, about the animals and the, what happens to their souls. What do you mean by the... Uh, when they asked out there about why he was... Uh, take the soul on to pass to Nishami. He said, I don't want to deal with the, with the ox. Now there's something for sure. No, everything has to have. So for sure it has a roshedish. The question: two things. The first of all, the shedish and the animal uh, they don't have a real relationship. That's bislapsus. And the shama can change a goof. Does mitzvahs? It can it can fulfill. You know, shedish a shed. And secondly, like he said, it's, is it the tzir of the shayr or it's, uh, it's like a mazel? Because listen, ain l'cha osif, ain le mazel shama legdo. So everything has a mazel l'mayla. You mentioned this already, you know the Bavusta story with the chosid that didn't want to... Uh, Mein ganed v'luch kenferd n'shtobim. So the chachava mina has a fervet kum in ganed. You know the maizah. Chosid used to walk to the Rebbe, the Rebbe in Lubavitch all the time. He got older, didn't want to walk. So he said, why don't you want to walk? I mean, I'm sorry, he wanted to continue walking, even though he was old. They said, take a carriage and a horse, it'll be faster. No. They said, why? He says, because I don't have any schools. I'll come up Lamaila and ask me, what did you accomplish in this? I said, I walked to my rabbi. And I, I don't want a, a horse to come along. And I, I don't want I, I don't want to have a horse in my Lubavitch. That's what he said. You know? It's the only thing I have, but it's pure. I don't want my horse to come and say he wants half the reward, basically. Because <laughs> he took me. It's a good lesson in life. That's why they say it's important to tip a guy that does something for you, so you shouldn't have a book on the Rabbeinah. Look, the point, the point of the matter is... Look, the point is, it's more complicated than you think it is, because at the end of the day, we also know that when you're mavarer, even a daimim, there's something... Forever. So, right, right. So, so, so even... So, look, 
When we say Dir Batahtainim, when we refine this world, when Mashiach will come, and the the world itself will be filled with Alakus, not just the Shamas will be here. And there'll be also non Jews, the Rambam says. So there's no question that even Gashmi Elam will have the Lakus in it, so it'll be revealed and it'll be the Niglik for the Vavad all called Bosser Yachtav. So what the, this, the real question would be, what's the difference how Bosser sees godliness and how an Asham and a Guf sees godliness, besides quantity, besides revelation? Is there a fundamental difference? So some places the Rebbe explains the differences between a Mtsoi and a, and a, you know, and a Tachlis. One is a means and one is an end. That the world is a means. It's not the end in itself. It's like Bishvil. Bishvil, ha, bishvil Yisrael, Bishvil HaTeda. So it still has value, like the Raga Trevor says, for example, that even Heiloch al-Mizbeach, even walking to the Mizbeach, which is just a means, it also becomes an Aveda. Why? Because in Kedusha, even, even when you do something that leads to something else, also has value. But you still can't compare it to the actual Aveda, the Karm. You bring an offering. So in other words, because everything served God, everything will be rewarded. And there will be, but it's a difference between the thing itself. Is this a lakus or it's a step to lakus? That type of, it's 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 fundam- it's, it's complicated because at the end of the day, kalim and eiris are both godly. They're both one, and yet you say like so this is medai. You say You don't say He is one with the uh, the energies and the containers. You say he's one with the energy and he's one with the containers. So clearly. Yeah, because Eir is, at the end of the day, Eir is more bittel, and Eir is more pshitis, more reflects the divine revelation. And Kalim reflect more the divine power of, 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 of a yesh, or of structure, and so on. So there are two different things that God wants, even though they're all going to be united, but they reflect two different things. And at the end of the day, so an neshama actually sometimes compared to a mamutza between the two, because an neshama is elakus shenase nivra. So it's a rare, it's a rare thing. Eir, you don't say Eir, a keli is elakus shenas and nivra. You say that on a neshama. So you really have a bunch of things. A keli is a keli, Eir is a Eir. They both can be divine, and then a neshama has its own. A neshama is almost like an express train in a sense. Because think of this: if if God created a world, what do you need neshamas for? The world also has godliness, because the neshama is the only one that can bring the highest levels and, and break the klipa and the helm of this world, because it has. That's, you know, when we say, Nishta Vil, Nishta Kenzain, Ogerisen, from another cause, and Hashem, even, even down here, even the farthest it gets, it can't be separated from God. You don't say that on a table. You don't say that on an animal. That's a key difference. Because it means the Etzem remains somewhere there. Only an Hashem has that power. That's why it has the power to transform this world. Because in Chavish Atzme, the world itself, as much as has, is created by God, but it's now inside containers, inside a world that cannot go beyond itself. So we're like agents from the outside. Like yeah, exactly, exactly. Even a step further, before Martin Taylor, even we, even the Shamas couldn't do it. Or let's put this in, the Ovis, they could not change Gashmis. It had to be with Martin Taylor and the Shamas after Martin Taylor. Now we have the power to do so. The point is, yes, the transformation has to come from a force that's outside. Exactly, aliens. So when they say Jews are Jews, Jews are aliens, it's yeah. true. Because if we become part, listen, there's all kinds of mashalim in the madrashim. What's the mashal? What's the beautiful mashal in the madrash? How? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, there's all these different examples. How our neshama is fundamentally not made of the same. Uh, that's why Mordechai lo yichre v'leishtachve. We don't worship, but they worship. Anyway, I mean, the, okay, fine. So now, so that the pnei shoshe. That's why even when it comes in biyah, it's also. And he's explaining it further. Look, he's not trying to suggest that they're the same, but he wants to understand in Havana the difference. So now he's saying another difference. And in general, the creation of all the celestial bodies and above comes from the level of Dibur. Dvar Hashem, he speaks. O Baruch Pi from the from the what the Ruach, the the breath of his mouth comes called Svam. That's the expression, called Svam. O Bris and Hashem beginis Machshave, and the creation of the soul is from the level of Machshave. And remember, we spoke earlier, Machshave and Dibur is Eir and Keli. 
Okay, but for Nishma, for Yipach Ba'apos, or Ba'yipach Meloshen Techiyusei, it says this elsewhere. It says in other places. It says Ba'yipach Ba'apos is not dibur, however. Dibur Dvar. In other words, there's two ways you can blow and you can speak. And you speak is also Hevel Hapeh, but it says Primis Hevel is Ba'yipach Ba'apos. V'nim tzedesibas nitzchis anashamah pnei shimamish al akuz d'shem avaya. So we find from this that the cause for the eternity of the soul. Is because it's mamish al kus of Shem Avaya. So in other words, the nitzkis of Tzvah Shemayim, the fact that the celestial bodies run all the time like they were in the original when they were first created, that comes because of a power that's outside of them. The siba of the nitzkis of Neshama is mamish mamesh al It's literally al of Shem Havaya. And now again he brings the Agedas HaTshuva. I guess this Agedas HaTshuva in all the parentheses. This parentheses goes how long? Right here. No, no, no. This is, is a parenthesis within. No, no. There's another one, and there's another one. There's two. Yeah, it's a long one. It is a long one. Because there's two. It, there's another. There's two inside this one. Okay, so brace yourselves for a bunch of parentheses, and then we'll go back to outside the parentheses. Fine. So now he's going like this. Which means it's according to what it says in the Geras HaTshuva now. Clearly the Geras HaTshuva is a Yisod for all this, but he keeps bringing it in parentheses. So in the Geras HaTshuva, it says that Neshamas are from Shem Avaya. It also says that it comes from Primis Achayas. So this is a Shem. So? Yeah, so it's not good. And also according to what's explained in several in other Bukama Duchtin. He's now he's now going, this is remember there's two ways, two tracks here in explaining the Shamas. Mistake? It's in other words, it's Buzaya. Yeah, Buzaya. Where? No, that's not correct. But this is correct. The Kama Duchtin is correct. Yeah. Yeah. So now, remember, there's two tracks here. Do neshamas come from Eir, from Tehiri Law and Eir, or Kavaya? Or do they come from Kalim and Garmui and, uh, like you said, the Eishu Sarashimu and so on and so forth? So now he's going now the other way also. So that's our Geras HaTshuva. Remember, and he said before that even according to the interpretation that neshamas come from Kalim, it's also Alakus. So now he's also saying the same thing here. He's going further. That's what says good. So Geras HaTshuva is what? Shema Vaya. And also, according to what is explained in Kama Duchtin, Kama Duchtin means in several uh, texts. Several, uh, yeah, texts. Shehem Bchinis Primis Akelim, that the Nisham has come from Primis Akelim. Before he just said Kelim. Primis Akelim, Hain Shehem Chelik Mbchinis Akelim. In other words, different Kelim, not Eir, not Havai. It means Elikim. Ukamay Shekos, Babir Azer, Pinchas, Almay Marazer, Dafresh Memtes. Like he says in Birazer and Pinchas, he's being very thorough here. And the Pasuk of Bukhaydah Sharishim. V'im shah neshami rak chele kot ma kelim, that even though the neshami is only a small part of the containers, mekom mokom hani b'chines el akuz de kelim. Nevertheless, they're the level of el akuz of kelim. So in other words, even though they're kelim, it's still the, God, the godly, the divine part of the kelim, not the structured part of the kelim. He's essentially he's quali- uh, um, reconciling it with the explanation here that it's air. That's the primis akelim, maybe what he said earlier. Remember primis akelim? Uh, that may also be the aved of the nefesh alakis. Remember he kept saying omnom, because this is nefesh alakis. In aved, the nefesh alakis is mispera eris. But the chayr is kelim here. So he said before primis akelim. So primis akelim are far closer to the divine. The ikur is air there. So he's reconciling between the so two. It's really air. It's it's st- yeah, but it's still called but it's called kalim. We'll, we'll explain the difference. Let's just read this inside. But it's going to the kalim. Kamesh kos bir rozeishem bulakut the teira ba'bir habeis the yeinosi. He's bringing real quotes here. So again, it's a tshuva nisham is havaya eris. According to the bir rozeir and now the kut the teira, again is is that the nisham is a kalim, but it's primis a kalim, which is a lekus the kalim. Or by again it's a kalim sima chaf. You see, there's very thorough uh, con- comparisons. What does it say there? Ela me'ein b'chines alakus, b'tzimtzum otzum u'kein ha'kelem d'yutzvidus da'atzilus. 
So I guess HaKadosh says like this, Me'ein b'chin salakus b'tzim tzum atzum, that it's Me'ein, he has the word Me'ein, it's similar to the godliness, but it's with a tzimtzum otzim, with a very profound, a very powerful concealment. Ukein hakelim di yutzvidas datzilis. Again, this is a very he's very clear the research here. So he's using exactly so it's kein kelim di yutzvidas datzilis. Or ba'agos libida azeir hanal shagam bisavusim biyayim pchinas alakus mamish. And the ha'agos of libida azeir that even as they come in biyah, as they're created in biyah, they're still mamish alakus. It's still consistent. Basically, okay, he continues. And the Biur Azir says that they become one with the Kalim. Now comes another parenthesis within the parenthesis. And the we have to understand. Tzarechiyah means needs, uh, it needs clarification, or Iyun is, it needs delving. Yeah. Tzarechin is usually a question, just for the record. There's also Tzarechin Gadol, there's a Tzarechin Kot, <laughs> or Tzarechin Ktas. It's Tzarechin. V'aloi mavur be'geres ha'kedesh ha'nal she'kva yotzu v'nifrudu ma'kelem. When you look in the Geres ha'kedesh, it, does, it says, Neshamas are rooted there. But the Neshamas themselves are the way they already yotzu, they left v'nifrudu, and they're separated from the Kelem. So how could you suddenly say that they're even Kelem and Primitza Kelem Nesachet? Which Lechera contradicts the Bira Azeir that says that they're Elokus Mamish and they're Mesachidim Akelim. Right? That he said Mesachidim Akelim. They're Nifredu Misham. Or Be'em is Behechlech Lehmer. And in truth, you have to say, it's a very fundamental piece about Nishamas here. Shem B'Bechin is Dveikus. You have to say, even when it says Nifredu, they're still Dveikus. It means they're still connected. They're still more than connected. Dveikus is cleaved. The Im Lehikein, Eichin Elokus. Because if not, how could you call them elikus divine? Because then, 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 then you could then you could say that it's like every object in existence. It also, it's rooted in elikus. Yeah, but then he says bring it down to bia. I see, I see a gospel. But there's a lotion in the Gersa case that says nifredu that they're separate. That's the question. That's why it's a tzarachian. He says it's separate from there. So he's saying even when it says separate, you have to say that it means that it's connected still. Because if not, why is it elikus? The ain lemesh at veikusim who pchinis has chachus mimikedom. Now he's asking, he's, 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 he's by warning. You could answer a different way. You could say no. You could say, you know what? That the Vegusam is not a natural process that comes through their Aveda. Well, not necessarily. No, I want to correct that. No, no. He's saying, maybe the Dveikus is not because they're connected to their source, but it's because that... Hmm. Right, exactly. In other words, it's not coming because they still retained their divine element. They did become concealed. He's asking. He's asking a question like on himself. Yeah. Look, let's just for for comparative purposes. What's the difference between an neshama that comes once it's separated from the kalim? What makes it different than anything anything that is going to be created in this world that's also separated from the kalim? So, yeah, yeah. So first he said. No, you can't say it's separated. Then he says, you, the Ein Lehme, you can't say that maybe their connection is not coming from their retaining their divine. It's coming from the fact that they're being constantly renewed, just like just like existence. Every physical thing in this world retains some connection because God's renewing it. Because they're constantly being renewed. In other words, it's not that the Neshama retained that element. It did become separate. And it's getting a constant energy from above. Like it says elsewhere regarding the divine energy that energizes existence. This is only possible. This is how he's bavarni. You can't say this. It's only possible in a reflection, not in an atzmi, not in an essential thing. There you could say that it constantly needs renewal. That's the distinction. Okay. So he's adding another element here. Everything in existence is only a reflection of the divine. So there you could say it still has a connection because it's like, it's like um, you know, think of it like a heartbeat. The heartbeat has to constantly go give, give, and refreshes new blood into the system. That you could say by Ha'ara. 
But a neshama is an atzmi. An atzmi means that it's a fundamental entity. Can your heartbeat, for example, give life to somebody else? No. You can give life in a way where you have the blood and it needs to be refreshed. You want an atzmi? Now, atzmi needs to have something. Can You can't just rely on this type of like uh, pump, so to speak. So there you have to say dveikus, even though nifredu, you can't compare it to a nifredu, you can't compare it to a creature. You have to say that it has dveikus that is constantly connected. Yeah. Now you could ask, how do you know a shom is atzmi? That's another question. But he's making that, that's a given, I guess, here. Because, you know, let's see where he goes here. So, that, so therefore you can't say that explanation. Therefore you have to say, the so you have to say, just like the containers, according to this explanation, that neshamas are rooted in containers, just like our containers are created like a separate entity, with a separate personality, kelim of atzilas themselves, they're also separate, they're not like air. Rak, shuhu, b'chines dveikus she'en nekeres. You have to also say it's connected, attached cleaves, but it's a cleaving that it's not recognizable. We learned this before also, the difference between dveikus nekeres and she'en nekeres. Dveikus nekeres means when you see actually, let's say, a flame being drawn to another flame. Undeniably. You see it. There's another dveikus where two things are connected, but you don't see them being drawn to each other. That doesn't mean they're not connected. So it's two different types of dveikus. The Rebbe has a letter about this also on Tov Shem Beis. Um, he explains it with a beautiful muscle. I'm trying to remember what it is. I'll, I'll look it up. The bottom line is, also by Kalim of Atzilus you say this. So, Kamoy Kain, Hanashom is Ma'kalim. The same thing that Nisham is Ma'kalim. Even though the Keres HaKeres says, Nifrudu, that they separated, and Gamkem Bechin is dveikus, have built in the Keres. They're also... Remain connected, but the nifrudu, in other words, the geres okay, there's separate means that it's not nikr. It's not recognizable. V'zeo shiyatsu v'nifrudu. Oh, okay, that means that it went out and became separate. It's all answering, uh, trying to answer the, the words of the geres okay, to make it, to reconcile it with what he's saying here. Nevertheless, they're united and attached. Now, obviously, he needs more explanation what this means, dveikus, this dif- different types of dveikus. And according to this, we can say that neshama is him shenasu neshama is the biya gam shenasu neshama is the biya. You can say that the souls, even as they became souls in biya, him bchins dveikus v'sardus, they remain attached, cleaved, and united. The im leikain eichain elakus. By the way, the parentheses ends here. The second, the second one. If not, how are they elakus? Actually, bchins dveikus are built in the keres. It's also a dveikus. It's not recognizable. In other words, by a tzaddik, for example, down on earth, you can see all the time that everything he does is is, is expression of what God wants him to do. By a regular neshama, you know, neshama biyah, which means neshama that already has the levushim of biyah, you don't see it. You see people busy with their own things. But push comes to shove, like a, like he says in the Geras and Tanya, nefesh, kal shabakalim. Suddenly, you challenge them in the deepest way, and suddenly. Which means not that suddenly now they got connected. They were connected. It just didn't rec- It was not it's distinguishable. It's like it was camouflaged. And you can live a life that's even hepech, God forbid. But when it comes to something that they think is going to connect, because then, because they still think that's a denu biyaduse. They still think they're connected. When it comes to a challenge, I'm just giving you an example of it. Okay. Umuven shu b'chinis helam yesim and hasham is that silas. Like it's just, and it's understandable that it's concealed more than the neshamas of atzilus. Nevertheless, they too cleaved. Okay, that ends parentheses. That this answered the geras hakedush. Now he's going back to before that. What was before that? The bottom line is they're united with the kalim, and the nifredu is explained. So now he goes back. It's still the parentheses, still explaining according to the kalim. Basically, the parentheses is explaining the shamas according to the explanation that it's rooted in containers. Even according to this explanation, that they come from containers, their kiyum, their preservation, their um, perpetuation, their sustenance is kiyum atzmi. They fundamentally are eternal. Not like the celestial bodies, even though those bodies are strong as they were in the day of they created, which is like something that lasts, like something that doesn't have any, it does not diminish, does not, something that does not, built in nifsed, you have a word for it, it's not deteriorate, does not erode. 
Nevertheless, that, per, that per, perpetuation is not atzmi. It's not fundamental to them. Like you said earlier. It's only because of the divine power, which is the God's desire. That's imposing upon them, superimposing upon them, something that they're not. Here it says, Whereas souls, that their perpetuation is from their unity with their source. It's not, it's not like a stone or an object that's out. What, right. Or whether it's from the perspective of the energies or the perspective of the kalim that we're speaking about in this parenthesis, and because of that, they are divine. And because of that, they're divine. Let me, the nigan is a little different. Their kiyum is atzmi, meaning it's, it relates to them. It's not some outside force imposing itself. Like it says elsewhere in the Indian of Eir, that even though it comes from the source, the luminary, the source of Mizehu Kiyume, and from there comes its sustenance, Sharia Eir, who Gilirutseni. Because energy is a Gilirutseni. The sun, in the sun, it's not. The sun must shine. It's not energy, it's actually the light from the sun. But he's talking, he doesn't want to talk about the sun, because the sun is not Ritseni. No, no, he's not talking about the sun. That's what he means. In other words, we're talking here about divine energy. Eid ain't sof. He's talking definitely about Eid ain't sof here. Or Eid ain't nefesh maybe. But it doesn't matter. But, but it's a gilad it's a, it's, it's a It's by will. It's by desire. If he wants it, shines. If he wants it, doesn't glow. Shine. Nevertheless, all the time that the Eid exists, he begins to it's always there in a fundamental way. Being that the air is connected, is attached to the source, to the to the core source, the essence, it's similar to the essence. And that's what means that it's air and it's a state of God divine. And therefore, its life force and its sustenance is in a It itself is fundamentally essential and it's sustained in an essential way. So he's saying, He's comparing it, the same containers. Even though they're not Vekus, you don't see their attachment. Which means they don't, they're not connected, which means you don't see, it's not recognizable. Nevertheless, they too are attached and cleaved because they're atzilus. They're emanations from there and they're divine. And also, maybe we should stop here. I think I'm going to stop here. Because this needs... I don't want to go fast. I don't want to go fast. Okay, so we're in the middle of the parentheses. We're explaining how even according to the fact that Nishamas are in Kalim, rooted in Kalim, it's also connected. It's only it's only not in a recognizable way. And he's actually comparing it to the Eir, just like Eir is connected and retains something Kiyamatsmi, also Kalim do. I'll explain this more in the next in the next session. Um, and then he's now going to explain that the Eir is also now connected to the Kalim, he's connected to the Eir. It's a very fundamental chapter, I see. Because it's turning into this whole Eir and Kalim relationship. So we'll stop here. We did half of chapter 88, page 169 through 170.